Oh, we Costa this week. I guess. Oh. Oh, I think we're yeah. recording. We're recording. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Welcome to this week's Whole Week Costa. Uh, I'm Jay here with Kevin. We're drinking two different beers. I'm drinking an American Black and Tan by Yingling. As you can see, uh, hold on. Let's switch this half here. It's dark. And he's drinking uh, yeah, this the beer Mexican we, version. We smuggled the, across the wall. Modelo. <laughs> Modelo. Uh, especially Modelo Negro. Modelo, oh, Modelo Negro. It is a medium bodied lager with slow roasted caramel malts. Brewed lager to enhance the flavors. This Munich Dunkel style lager gives way to rich flavor and remarkably smooth taste. And then there's a chef on the front page for some reason. He's, I guess, frying up some beers and shit. Um, and then there was some nutrition facts which I thought were interesting because it includes the amount of potassium in it, which I feel like we don't usually think about. 140 milligrams. And apparently, this beer is vegan. I mean, I don't think. I think all the beers vegan. Yeah, I don't think there's meat in most beers. Yeah. Uh, you um, you mind if I start off with like the kind of funny story I thought of today? Yeah, I'll, I'll laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about this story. I went on um. I used to go on a uh, bunch of dates. Not in, like a year and a half though. Yeah. Because that's yeah. But anyway, I at least on, a year. I went on a date. I don't think I've ever told this, but I went on a date, and I was thinking, I was talking to a guy today that I haven't, um, I haven't talked to in about two years mm-hmm. since the election because I voted for Gary Johnson yeah. and his girlfriend. Like now he's married. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's getting married. And I talked to him today. I was like, I didn't get invited. He's like, I haven't talked to you in two years. He's like, I miss you, but you know, I didn't think you were gonna talk to me yeah. again. I was like, be like hundred bucks. So this bucks is the funny story. And I go. Well, your fiance is like kind of a jerk off. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, you know, I'm getting married, so I was like, oh, I'm still gonna, because she like flipped out on me because I didn't vote for for Hillary. Yeah. But I want to vote for Hillary. Yeah. And Hillary won New Jersey anyway. Yeah. My one vote wouldn't have counted because her, because you went off the electoral college and the electoral mm-hmm. college. So at this point, Hillary won New Jersey anyway. Yeah. And my vote didn't count. Yeah, basically. Most of our votes don't count. Just, yeah. just like most things in life. Whatever we do doesn't matter. Now, if there was no electoral college, my vote would have counted. No, I mean, it's still, it's still, it still wouldn't count. It still would have went to Gary Johnson. Yeah. Which is, which is who I voted for. But anyway, uh, he goes, hey, remember the time we, like, we went out for, like, a beer and you had eaten lunch at Fede Sal before? And the guy, was, and, and the guy went, um, <laughs> the guy went, oh, you're back again? Because we went out for a beer, he's like, you want to get some lunch? And I go, yeah. But I figured, like, we weren't going to get lunch afterwards. Mm. Um, we were just going to drink cold beers, and I was going to, like, Uber back home. But he goes, hey, you want to go, like, Fede Sal? It's a barbecue place. And mm. I go, yeah, I'll go. And I had already eaten, like, not, mm. a, not a ton. And I go, he goes, hey, back again? But, like, a couple weeks, maybe a month or two before that, mm. I, I went to go get uh, coffee with a girl, like, on a date. Yeah. And um, so we go get coffee. But before I went, Fede Sal was like where we want to meet. Mm-hmm. It was like, I don't know, a couple blocks uh, away from the coffee shop. So I was, was like, oh. Was one of the string of big girls you did? Yeah, let's not talk about that. Yeah. But uh, so, so we, we uh, so I meet up with her. But before that, I went to Fede Sal mm-hmm. and I got me a soda and some like pulled pork. And yeah. some mac and cheese. It was delicious, right? Mm-hmm. And I figured she's not going to want to eat because, you know, you meet up for the first time. And she, <laughs> so she goes, hey, there's a barbecue place up the street. You want to go check it out? Like, like, I was like, oh, I guess the, you know, the coffee's going well. She's like, yeah, all right, cool. So we go, we go, um, get some barbecue. Mm. Same guy. Mm. He goes, oh, you're back again. <laughs> and she, she goes, she goes, were you here before? Like today, and I go, yeah, it's not my first time. And the guy goes, it's not his first time today. <laughs> the guy's a jerk. Yeah, and then like, like literally like two months later, hmm. I did the same exact thing, and the guy goes, hey, back again. And and my friend Matt goes, he goes, uh, you were here today already. I go, yeah, I had to eat before I eat beers. Yeah. And he goes, and he goes, um, he goes, you're back again today. And I go. <laughs> Yeah, it's good barbecue. Like, what, what do you expect from me? Is that that jerk way? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that guy wasn't there. Yeah. But it was like a different guy. It's like, oh, you back again? And I'm like, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm back again, okay? Yeah. So, so these are the only time you go to that place if you're going to go there twice in the same day. Yeah. Actually, I've been there. I've been there a couple times, and I've mm-hmm. only gone there once. I've eaten enough for two two meals, but yeah. I, I, I just had you walk out, and then one of the waiters is like, oh, "That guy's coming back later." <laughs> Don't worry about <laughs> it. Yeah, our tip jar is gonna be pretty good. Yeah. Hey, have you ever been there? No. Oh, it's, you you definitely wouldn't want to pay for it. I'm real, I'm real yeah. cheap. Yeah. It's like twenty dollars a pound for barbecue. Yeah. Yeah, and then like, but between five and seven, they have half price beers, yeah. so you can get like a. 32 ounce. Well, before that, yeah. Uh, the guy he's dating, right? Mm. She was going to teach me how to ice skate yeah. his girlfriend. So it's like right around Christmas time. And we went to the river rink. But he mm. lives like right up the street. So we went to go to Fede Sal to get a beer. And she said, if I'm going to teach you, you're only allowed to get one beer. And I'm like a grown man. Mm. And I was like, I'm not getting one beer. She's like, oh. she's like, I won't teach you. I, uh, long story short, I can't skate because my... Foot on street, yeah. Like it, like I can't, I can't skate. Yeah, anyway. they made you, right? Yeah. Um. So she goes, uh, she goes. You're not. You're only allowed to have one beer. So I got a 32 ounce beer, like a giant stein for like six bucks. That's fair. Yeah, and she goes, oh, that's not what I meant by one beer. And I go, you want me to get two beers? And she's like, no, I meant you can get like an eight or a 12 ounce beer. I go, you Here's said like, one beer. Here's an eight ounce beer. Yeah. Uh, well, they have four ounce beers. That's like, a, that's like a child's beer. They have four ounce beers. They have eight ounce, 12, 16, and 32. I'm pretty sure they make child's beer. Yeah, they do. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I get one beer, and she was super mad, and then... Is this the Hillary supporter? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was super Why mad. Why's she ice skate anyway? I mean, she's, she's, she's friends with the devil killing all those babies. So. Yeah. Uh, so she was super mad, and uh, so I gave uh, Matt, like, six bucks, and he got me another beer, and she's like, oh, he's going to be all drunk. And he's like, so what? It's like the yeah. middle, you know, middle of winter. It's like seven o'clock at night. It's thirty degrees. That's when you want to be drunk. So she got mad at me because me and him drank like four giant beers. So that'll probably make it safer when you fall, right? It yeah. Probably hurt less. Yeah, because you're not uh, as tense. Oh, there. Um, unrelated to that, this uh, I saw this. I saw this article about Tom Brady. So the clickbait part of it was that one of his former teammates was criticizing him or whatever. Which wasn't entirely true. Like he kind of was criticizing him for being the greatest quarterback of all time. Well, it it seems like just for the little. I mean, I I you know I don't follow Tom Brady that closely where I see like a lot of interviews or anything. But it seems like, and I mean this happens to people like between like dating a supermodel and being like yeah the most talented like maybe athlete of all time. He's just become like a real fucking weirdo. Um, he doesn't eat tomatoes. Oh, really? Yeah, or he only eats tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big difference. Yeah, I don't know the difference. Um, but he he had some interview where he says he said basically how he does this like plasticity training with his body so that like so that, like when he gets hit like it looks like it hurts but like, it doesn't hurt him because right. like his body can like magically absorb like the, 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 the force of the impact and like distribute it throughout his body. He's basically like a superhero is what you're yeah. trying to say. Well he doesn't do any weight training. Okay. He doesn't do any weight training because weight training he sees these guys that do weight training and yeah. they get their real their bodies are stiff and they get yeah. injuries. Yeah he's real he's like Gumby apparently. Yeah, but here's the thing, difference between that. Mm. He doesn't have to push another two hundred and fifty pound man around. Yeah, yeah exactly. So he doesn't have to do the weight training. Yeah. He just has his Gumby arm that he throws with, and that's yeah. it. Um, but so, but this this former linebacker that he played with, his point is basically like, oh, so are you saying like all these guys that like played hard and like had head injuries and stuff, like it's their like they're just weak? Like is that what you're trying to say? Like you're special and like fuck these guys? So Tom Brady was probably like, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, he mystically absorbs the impact, so I guess it, something. It, it makes sense. But then you gotta, you gotta like realize something, and this is this is fact. If you do weight training, yeah. your muscles get stronger. Yeah. And if your muscles get stronger, your tendons have to get stronger. True. And if your tendons get stronger, your bones have to get stronger. True. So the more weight training you do, the stronger your body actually is. So you're yeah. better at absorbing impact. But. He's worth a hundred million dollars. Like they put the best guys in front of him. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, he, you know, he he's he's playing at the softest time for for the quarterback position ever. So, I mean, he's not on it. Like nobody even hits him. So, yeah. 
But mm-hmm. what, they, what they didn't end up is Bobby just distribute the impact. Yeah, it's um, like uh, like um, like 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 some guy in the front row would get hurt. Like it wouldn't it wouldn't affect him. <laughs> he puts it off to a cripple kid. Yeah. Like the, the kid only feels pain now. <laughs> so yeah, he's he is a weird guy. There's like he wrote a book mm. about like. Well, it was Goose written, but he wrote a book about how great he is yeah. at everything. And like, I agree like, that. He has like a diet. I think it's like, I think it's like a lot of tomatoes or something. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not something really with Tom Brady and tomatoes. Yeah, but I think it's like he has a really weird, really strict diet. See, if Rachel would produce the show for us, she could be like looking this stuff up in the background. Yeah, she's not. But I, I mean, she. She, I mean, she's here anyway. Like, well, what's she doing? What's she doing right now? Avoiding us. But she could be producing the she's show. She's smartly avoiding us. She could be. She could be the executive producer of we Holy can, Costa. Yeah, we can get a producer, but it's not yeah. gonna be her. So yeah. let's not worry about it. So, so do you have a date night the other night or no? Yeah, did we yeah. Have, like, yeah, Joe's we, Joe's crab shop. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we um um, which was kind of funny because you know it's not like pretty frugal. I was thinking about because I. I I feel like I always talk with this one, um, this one like n- like nursing assistant at Jefferson about how we're both basically equally as poor as each other, even though she's like nursing assistant with multiple kids. And I'm like a nurse practitioner, but but I feel like I feel like I, I feel like I'm kind of an asshole and like talk like we're like I'm I'm I'm, I'm equally struggling. Right? right. Yeah. She probably yeah. looks down and you're like yeah yeah yeah, you know. yeah which is which yeah so but but whatever she 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 um she humors me so. But I, I was I was I was talking with her about it because because she knows I'm like real frugal and I was saying um, um, you're not frugal you just don't know how to spend money like you like I've been shopping with you you just throw shit in the in the cart and and yeah. then your cart like costs like two hundred and twenty dollars you're like I'm all out of money <laughs> yeah well food food shopping I feel like is different because because you want to buy that stuff and you don't eat other food that's more expensive yeah. uh, but um. But uh, but yeah, so I see. I went to yeah, I went to Joe's Crab Shop, and I'd never been there. And Kelly's like always talks about it, and like we always pass by. And we finally went. She's like, oh, I'm gonna get the thirty five dollar bucket of crabs, and I was like, we get the ten dollar fish tacos then. <laughs> I was like, it's fine, and they were really good. It was it was like a lot of food for the amount of money I spent. Um, it was it was pretty good. I thought the crabs honestly weren't the crabs honestly weren't as good as like the crabs my dad made on like. Christmas and New Year's because he made like crabs for days right. and they were like softer and there was more meat in them and I don't know so like the crabs weren't anything special um, I mean like my dad makes crabs well but it's not like he's not like it's not like his are like the best in the world yeah. they were just they're just they're better than Joe's Crab Shack <laughs> yeah. don't you so. just boil water with like lemons or yeah I don't know I mean there must be some way to how you cook them because they you know Sometimes when you have them, like just the shells like fall apart, and like it's easy to get the meat. Sometimes some are more tougher, um, and and you do put like you usually put some sort of flavoring in. Well, yeah, you put like old bay, like old bay and stuff. Yeah, yeah and then I know you sprinkle the top of the crabs with old bre- old bay or whatever whatever seasoning you like, and then like as you break it apart, you get it on your fingers and you suck the crab meat out, and the yeah. old bay gets on it like that. So it's like it's a whole ordeal. After Nate from Colorado and I went to the Eagles game, mm. uh, we had Rachel pick us up at. Nah, chicken and beets. So she'll pick you up with chicken and beets, but she won't. She won't produce our show. Yeah, but it's anyway, she, we went to chicken and beets, and Nate's like, oh, "I want crabs," and I'm like, "All right, cool." And he ate like a crab and a half, and it took like forty five fucking minutes. Yeah. He's like, like I wanted to be really nice. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, just keep eating them. Like I was just being nice. Like I, didn't, I didn't actually care. Yeah. But then he's like, I'll pack it up, and like the fourth time, I was like, yeah, yeah, let's just pack it up and get out of here. Like. But, like, he put them in the toaster oven, and he said they were fine the next day. But it, it was, like, 45 minutes. Well, that's the thing. Um, yeah, I think I think Kelly was, like, embarrassed because, like, I mean, I just had fish tacos, so I was done eating them in, like, 10 minutes. And then she was there for another half, yeah, like, half hour eating crabs. Yeah. And then she, like, kept telling me to eat some of them. I'm like, no, that's fine. I'm, like, pretty full from the fish tacos. And she was like, no, like, I'm we're going to be here for an hour. Uh, but it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool in there. Um, I, I forgot where I went when uh, Nate... And he got king crab legs. He got like yeah. six king crab legs, and they're like fucking huge. They were like this big. Yeah. They bend them, and then like he, you like crack them, and you take out like a foot of meat. Yeah, yeah. That seems a little more worth it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, even like I guess they they use like the dungeness crabs or whatever. I don't know what. I yeah, 
I know like, king crab and spider crab. Well, so and like, then, like pubic crab. Yeah, like regular, like regular crabs suck. Like, like, um, like they're just, I don't know. I think I think it's a, they're a total waste of time. Like, like I I made them over the summer. Um, in South Philly, they make this crabs and gravy bullshit, which is like awful. It's like you make crabs and you put them in like pasta sauce for some fucking reason. Even though like I just I just rinse them off. I'm like this, this doesn't go on crabs. Um, I don't know, but but I think that's like a waste of time. I don't know because it's, it's like get these little chunks of meat out. You know, dungeonists are the ones that are like it's like it's like halfway between like a, like a regular crab and like a king crab. Like oh, yeah. so so they're not too expensive, but you still got a big chunk of meat out of them. Yeah. So oh, that's where it was. We yeah. went to uh, we went to the Chinese buffet. Yeah. Uh, like uh, like ten minutes from here. Yeah. And they had uh, it was like thir- like. I got the regular buffet like eleven ninety nine, and he yeah. got like the crab buffet. Yeah. And like like there was like a like a Chinese guy standing over the thing, yeah. and like you got your hand stamped, and he huh. got like thirty fucking crab legs, you know. Yeah. That's that's all he ate too. What well, that's actually what I said to Joe's Crab Shack since the crabs weren't anything special. I was like I was like honestly, these aren't substantially better than the ones you get at a Chinese food buffet, right. and there it's like going to be like twenty five dollars, and you're also going to get other food. Yeah, you're gonna like you're gonna like roll like 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 sushi rolls and like you know the random Chinese pizza for some reason and like yeah. all that shit. Yeah, there was an argument tonight that I heard that uh, uh, Rachel and Mom went to go pick up vermouth or some bullshit, mm. and and like her sister's like yeah, I'm like oh it's eleven dollars there, but if you went all the way to Total Wine and More, it's eight ninety five for the same bottle, and it's like yeah, but that's a twenty minute drive there, a twenty minute drive back. Yeah, and. I was like, unless you're buying a whole box of liquor, it's not even worth a like, box saving, of yeah, like like you're you're using two gallons of gas and forty minutes, if not more, of your time to to save two dollars. Uh, it's it's still cheaper. It's, it's, like, it's not it's not cheaper at all. Like like there's whole time and travel, you know. Do you or, you think Rachel drank a whole box of vermouth she would produce the show? No. <laughs> no. She's never gonna produce a show, so we could drop that. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's crazy, like, uh, my, the, the, my, what's, what's the thing I work in? Oh, uh, like, like shipping? No, I, I know I work in shipping, uh, yeah. I forget what it's called, uh. Building? No, uh. Warehouse? No, nah, getting close. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's when you group a bunch of jobs together, like you're in the medical field. Yeah. I'm in the it's a lower line and blue collar. Uh, I can't think of the word right now. Yeah. But anyway, our our field, I guess, mm. for like warehouse manufacturing, the thing is, that when you're trying to figure out like lean assessments and everything, it's uh, um, twenty five dollars an hour. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's the median range for like what I do. Yeah. So it's like when you're trying to figure out like taking steps out to twenty five dollars an hour, which is bit it's one of the lowest ones mm. uh, when you're trying to figure out lean. Like medical field's probably like much higher when you're trying to lean out processes and everything. Yeah. Uh, like clericals like a li- like little lower than ours. How's the connector removed? I'm I'm getting to it. <laughs> so when somebody asks me to do something to yeah. save two dollars. Yeah. I charge my time at twenty five dollars an hour. Yeah, no. So if I'm taking yeah. twenty minutes to drive there, but ten dollars in there, now now you just add twenty five dollars an hour to to what yeah. you're trying to save. Yeah, so, no, that's what they say you're supposed to do. I, I when yeah. back before kids, when I had like when I had more money than I needed, um, I read a few things like that where like anything that would cost more than your time, you should like source out. So like so so like so like I made enough money free kids that like I probably should have had someone clean my house like it would have been worth my time to like pay somebody else to do that right um yeah like um like my friend Frank he went to, to buy the first Xbox hmm. or Xbox 360 his mom drove him I went with him all the way to Delaware to save tax money it was like it was something crazy like $26 yeah so you drive an, you drive an hour there hmm. you drive an hour back hmm. You pay five dollars for the bridge. Yeah. You pay like you know seventeen dollars for gas or ten dollars or whatever you want to price out for that gas, which sounds fun. But if you had the hours in, now you're spending fifty dollars in my time to go save twenty six dollars. Yeah, 
True. You know, and that's that's how I look at a lot of things now. So it's like like okay, what's this, to save three dollars? Like, where's my time at? Yeah. And and you know, like you're a pretty busy guy outside. You know, outside of work, like I'm a pretty guy, like a pretty busy guy. Like I work, mm-hmm. I work out. Workouts like the some, one thing I like to do. Mm-hmm. Like I go to school. So it's like any time that's not doing that, like I want to sit on the couch and watch TV. Yeah, I don't want to veg, veg away. Like, like Saturday and Sunday, like I'll clean for like an hour or two. But other than that, like other than doing schoolwork and work and gym, I just want to sit around. I don't want yeah. to do anything. So no, I agree. I like, try to do that more as well. Yeah. Um, so the way we can make additional money is, I said before the podcast, I mean, we could probably give up this podcast thing and just be webcam models. Now, we could just have we could do just do an hour a week instead of doing the show. I mean, I don't know how we would sell it really. It'd be like two dudes, but like not gay. So yeah. like we wouldn't do any stuff together. Yeah. But like I feel I feel like we have more viewers. We would use this curtain, and separate it. Yeah. We have two cameras. Yeah. Or because we're broke right now, we just put the camera down the middle of the line. Oh, cut. Yeah, you can yeah, see both of us. So you see both of us. I have like nice little A cups. Yeah. And I have a big butt. Yeah, there you go. So, so, you, so you like show off your butt. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I would do. Well, we would have to ask people, like, just to make it even. Yeah. Like, we can't split it 50-50. We have to say where the tips are going. Sure. Yeah. Like, I want I want tips to the tall guy, tips to the shorter guy. Mm-hmm. And then we split it. Like, we do a percentage. Yeah. We get, like, a, we get like some sort of, like, some sort of, like, extra long prosthetic penis. That, like, like, hangs a, like a big, big dick neck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would want a super tan one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, like a super tan penis. People are like, holy shit, he uses that a lot. He yeah. must be out in the sun a ton. Yeah. How do you even get sunburned on his penis? Yeah. What's he doing? He's fucking outside. Yeah. People are like, let me see that dick. You get free barbecue twice in one day mm-hmm. because you just showed the guy your dick and he's yeah. like, well, I got to give this guy with a giant dick free barbecue. Yeah, I like it. So so that's probably the, that's probably the eventual direction of Holy Costa. I don't, I don't know what, what our... What are like what are like webcam name be? Uh, Holy Costa. Yeah. <laughs> Whole Dick Costa. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's it. That's the thing. Yeah. Hey, got a question for you. Yeah. This is a medical question. Do we have like membranes separating all our stuff down there? What do you mean? Like like our testicles, our prostate, our bladder. Yeah, it's all like in separate sort of areas. Like are there membranes? Like, hold it all in, right? I mean, in a way, yeah. yeah. So, like, like our semen can't just fall into, like, like rub against our bladder, right? No, there's something called retrograde ejaculation when that happens. Yeah. Um, so, the path would be essentially, so, so when you ejaculate, so, so most of the fluid comes from the prostate. So, the prostate basically would squeeze and push fluid into the urethra. And then you get some, like, semen from the testicles would come up, like, through the spermatic cords in the urethra. And then, normally, what would happen is, the path of least resistance is for it to go out, you know, so it's for you ejaculate. All right. Um, guys that have like pro have had like part of their prostate removed, or guys that have had that are on certain medicines that relax the prostate, like Flomax. What happens is the path of least resistance becomes backwards. So right. basically, when they ejaculate, I mean, it's all, all that's all that on the back end still happens. Well, instead of coming out, some or all of it goes backwards in the bladder. I mean, you just peed out the next time, so it's not a big deal. But but oh, okay. but, but you would you would see less semen come out. But some guys are really distressed by that. Um, I would think I would think like for some guys it's probably like easier. It's like oh no no cleanup, it's great. But like some guys are like re- like really equate like their virility with like how much they ejaculate. <laughs> really? I mean, it seems like it because some guys are like real upset when like I don't know. Well, what if a guy is trying to get his um like if he's trying to get his wife pregnant or whatever like. Do yeah. They have to like. Do they have to press on something or like for something like for something like that? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it would just be hard if they were, you know. I mean, if they were on a, on a medicine, you just stop the medicine, it goes back to normal. If they, you know, I mean, it doesn't come up a lot because usually, I mean, guys that would need a prostate surgery are like in their fifties, sixties, seventies. So I mean, if it did happen, I mean, that is a consideration. Like if you're trying to get somebody pregnant and you had like a prostate reduction sort of surgery, you know, that could be a big issue because you, you you might not, you know. Would mm-hmm. they have to mm-hmm. go? Did they have to get like a vial on you or something? Or they probably need to do some sort of like in in vitro fertilization where they like harvest out the sperm from like your, right from your testicles. And, oh, okay. And like do it. Is that easier? 
I don't, know, I don't know too much about that. I don't think it's a difficult process. Right. I think it's expensive sometimes. Now so. you're saying, I got another question. Yeah. Are our testicles, like, right below our sac? Like, like, what do you mean? I mean, like, not, like, below it, but, like, like skin, then, like, testicles? Yeah, well, they sort of have their own, they have their own, like, um, they have their own, like, membrane around them, basically. Right. So, um, some guys actually get something called hydrocele. So, essentially, you have the testicle... And it he, sounds like something like you you would sell for your Chevy. Yeah, like those guys, like those guys at Johnson Farm. They're like, I got you that Ford shirt, yeah. and then he's like, Oh, what's it look like? You're like, It doesn't matter. Remember that? Yeah. And like like it's like, Oh, it comes with hydro seal. Like, yeah. <laughs> but but essentially, there's like a lining around the testicle that, and there's like a, and there's like a little bit of fluid inside it um, that that's supposed to cushion it and. Some guys, for whatever reason, we usually don't know a reason, like, that they build up more fluid than it, like, drains back out. So, so like, so I've seen guys with, like, where their, it looks like their testicles, like, this big. Really? And it's really, their testicles normal inside, and there's just all this fluid around it. Oh. Um, so you need to, like, drain it out, basically. How do you drain it out? Um, it's actually, a, so if you just drained it with, like, a needle, it would come right back. Oh. So it's actually, a, it's actually a, a, a um... As far as minor surgery goes, like a pretty annoying surgery, because you have to like go and cut out the extra, t- some of the extra tissue, and like sew it back so it doesn't reform, like the flu doesn't reform right away. But guys are really swollen for like weeks afterwards. Oh, it's really? Like, it's like a pretty miserable surgery. So like when you drain with a needle, it comes back like what? It comes a matter of days? Uh, probably like weeks or months, but yeah. still, like you don't want to do that all the time. Oh, okay. But is it bad for you? Or? No, oh. no. But there's, I mean, it, you know, because some guys. This is one of the annoying things. Guys will have pain down there, and they'll get, like, an ultrasound. We'll say they have, like, a small hydrocele. And it's like, that's fine. Like, probably a different day, you probably didn't have one at all. It's probably just the normal flu you have down there. And those guys sometimes get freaked out, but it's like, it's, it's nothing, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you would you would do a lot more harm trying to fix it. Um, but there, but there's guys that, like, can't put their pants on because their balls are so big. <laughs> really? So... Like in that scenario, you would fix it, yeah. you know, or, or like, or like it's heavy, like there's that much fluid there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like it hurts. Yeah. So, so there, are, I don't know, it's never happened to me. So there are guys that like, do they get like, like severe depression that they can't like, like shoot like a like a giant load? Yeah. Some guys get really upset about it. Some guys don't go through with those types of surgeries, even though they need them to pee because they're worried about that. Really. So there's actually a new procedure out in the last few years that has a much lower rate of that. Instead of cutting out prostate tissue, you just basically staple it back. Um, so it, it it only has about five percent of the time in that scenario. Yeah. But. Well, how do you get to how do you get to someone's prostate? So when you're doing it for a procedure like that, you go down the penis basically. Oh. So that sounds terrible. Yeah, people. So any procedure that people would be asleep for, but oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, but the way to think about it, what happens, what happens with guys is, so the testosterone in your body makes your prostate get bigger as you get older. Um, so in all guys, it gets bigger. But in, in some guys, either it only gets a little bit bigger, some guys it gets much bigger. Some guys, too, it, it grows in. So it blocks the urine flow. and other guys, it grows out, and it doesn't matter. So is it like a ball of muscle, or is it like a ball of muscle that looks like a tennis ball? Yeah, you think about it like a donut around the urethra. Oh, so, okay. Um, so it's around the urethra. Yeah. Right? Okay. And in some guys, it grows into the urethra and it blocks it. Like if you had like if you had like if you had like um you know like roots and grown into a pipe or something like that's okay. basically what it does. Now, does it like is it connected to the urethra or? It's all sort of like one tissue. Oh okay. Yeah. So, like like you would call that part of the urethra like the prostatic urethra basically. So if you have to get like your urethra or your prostate removed, like they have to, do they have to rebuild your urethra? Or? Yeah, you basically, you picture there's like the bladder and then there's like the urethra into the penis and then right where those two meet is where the prostate is. Yeah. So you had to basically cut that whole block out and then like reattach everything. Oh, okay. So, and, but that's, and then, and then guys have like leakage of urine problems afterwards and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, it's either that or die of cancer. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. So what's like, uh, uh, I guess the taint, like, is there anything there between our balls and our butthole yeah, or no? Not really. It's just a big old muscle? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, there's, there's something called the pelvic floor muscles right. are down there. That's actually what some guys have trouble with. Like if we see a guy come in the office that has like, you know, that's like a young guy and like has trouble peeing or like has pain down there. 
a lot of times it's just a muscle problem. Mm-hmm. Um, they used to they used to call it prostatitis, which was just like <laughs> basically like oh I don't know what to do with you get out of my office. Like they would yeah. give guys antibiotics for like no reason because they said like their prostate was inflamed or something. Um, but m- more often it's this what's called pelvic floor dysfunction, yeah. um, where essentially those muscles get like really tight. Like yeah. it's like just like just like if you have like back pain and like your back's really tight, like some guys get it down there. Yeah. Um, and there's there's specific exercises to treat that, just like there's stuff like for other muscles. Now, is is that related to prostitutes, where you're uh, where you're addicted to prostitutes? Uh, I, I mean, it could be. <laughs> it actually, it actually, actually, it could be because one of the you know classic pelvic floor dysfunction things is like a guy like cheats on his wife, and then is like feels guilty about it and now has all this pain down there. Really? Yeah. So I mean I mean I mean most guys that scenario that's not what happened to them, but that's like a classic like thing. It was like you know it's a, a classic dad joke. Yeah. Yeah. But um but uh yeah it's more often I mean you can you can almost kinda of tell. Like it's usually like a guy that's like younger, like thirties, forties, that's like uh like high functioning, like successful guy. Like that's usually what happens to like a guy that's like has a lot of anxiety and stress and stuff. Yeah. Usually, usually gets stuff like that. Yeah. But well, that's gonna suck. Yeah. So do you do you think you can get spasms? Because sometimes yeah, like I have a spasm in my in my uh, yeah floor. That's exactly what it is. Sometimes you and some guys are just tense all the time, and they even have can have trouble like like going to the bathroom because. It's so because it's so tight that it's almost like it's blocking the flow of urine because the muscles don't relax and some guys can get like muscle spasms down there and then they get like sharp pains off and on. So, oh, I get those sometimes. So yeah, usually uh, I don't know what happens, but I also I don't feel it doesn't hurt, yeah. but I kind of feel like I even feel that muscle when like I do a heavy deadlift, hmm. like the the whole area. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's one of the issues. Um, it's yeah. not something like I complain about. Like it's not yeah. nothing to complain about. Like I do. Like I noticed it this weekend. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's something where you know if it were much, if it got if it got problematic, you know, there's actually, and we have a bunch of there's a bunch of pen like you know, there's these pelvic floor physical therapists that specialize like in that area basically that that like that like can really evaluate each muscle and then like. And do they like, just do pelvic floor? Some of them do, yeah. yeah. And it's and that it, common of a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's that common of a thing, and there's it's so wide reaching. Like it's both, you know, m- men have issues with it, you know, with having trouble urinating and the pain. You know, other men say after you have your prostate removed, you know, then the goal is to strengthen the pelvic floor muscles to hold the urine in, so they don't yeah. leak. Um, same same issue with women. Now I'm completely ignorant to it because mm-hmm. I just found out about it mm-hmm. three minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Is can it is it like any other muscle? Can it, like is it just because of inactivity? Like people that just like sit around all day? A little bit, yeah. It's it definitely from inactivity, you know. And it's not it's not the muscle you might normally you know really put stress on or like exercise. Um, and some people just have you know you know we call it pelvic floor dysfunction because it's just that there's muscles you know, are essentially dysfunctional and like, you know, and spasm when they shouldn't and stuff like that. And then the goal of therapy would be to give people like, essentially, essentially like conscious control of those muscles is like what you're sort of going for. Um, it's like those, so like the sort of foundation is like those like Kegel exercises that like women do after childbirth. Right. Like that's sort of, um, that's sort of like the basis of it. And then there's like a lot more out from there. But. Uh, speaking of childbirth, mm. you know, other countries like, like especially France, mm. women after birth, cause it's so like bad for your body. Mm. They, they like it, they go for like 12 weeks of physical therapy. Oh, huh. like they do Pretty physical therapy. And, and apparently it makes like, it makes the body like come back together. Because it tears like through you, like yeah. you're, like a lot of muscles tear and like skin tears and everything. Yeah. And apparently, like after like a couple of weeks, like the women go to physical therapy, mm. and and the physical therapy brings their body like stronger, mm. and it actually helps with like secondary and tertiary birth. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, that's I mean that's sort of the classic female thing is like you know with like with like stress and continence is. Um, you know, after childbirth or whatever, you know, you have you have weakening of those muscles. Um, not only people, you know, classically people have vaginal deliveries where they have like tearing down there and stuff just doesn't fully heal. 
But even people that didn't have vaginal deliveries, just all the strain from like all that extra weight in your body can like right. over time weaken those muscles. Right. And then what happens is then say, you know, say it's like a, you know, you're not like a, you know, like a like Instagram model, but like just a normal in shape girl. And then she gets pregnant and she, you know, has, you know, ends up because of, you know, the pregnancy and the childbirth ends up with like a little bit of leakage. And then because of the leakage then stops like exercising because she's embarrassed about the leakage and then she gains weight and then the weight, the extra weight on those muscles now puts more strain on them. So they open up more easily and then it just like snowballs and now she's like 250 pounds and like totally incontinent. Oh, really? So it's like, yeah, it's like a really unfortunate thing because, like, there's, you know, ways to treat it before it gets to that point where people are just like, embarrassed about it. Um, yeah. You know, it's also, also pretty embarrassing. Hmm. Um, you know, not that, you know, I have to, and very, for very long, but, like, really just uh, buying condoms. Yeah. Because Walmart, hmm. I was, like, getting, uh, I don't know why, but a Meprazole. Yeah. Right around, the, right on the other side is like the condoms and lubricant and everything. Huh. So it's like, like being, you know, thirty. I'm still like, <laughs> I don't want to, like I wouldn't want to ask for a key, but like they lock up all their condoms. Yeah. And if I was a store, I would have the condoms out, like, like that, like, like if condoms were like stolen all the time. Yeah. And I was around, I'm like, that's great, because you know what, like condoms do, yeah. they don't have unwanted birth. Like yeah. they protect from, you know, diseases. Like, they, like condoms. Condoms are one of the best forms of birth control and and like not spraying of diseases and everything. And I don't want to try to like get rid of that stigma. Yeah. And like I'm I'm just telling you now, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old couples, they're having sex, so yeah. you might as well like start them off with condoms, you know. And and uh, you have to destroy that that stigma of like oh, I can't believe you're having sex. Mm-hmm. It fucking feels good. You yeah. Know, so, so, but I just thought it was weird that those were all locked up. Like I think if anything's being stolen from Walmart or another store, I kind of be okay if it was like those things. You know, because yeah, because overall, if kids are using condoms, it just helps the economy. Yeah. You know, you're not, you know, you're not having an unwanted child like that you can't take care of. Yeah, that's the thing, and that's um, yeah, it's almost a little bit irresponsible from those stores because, you know, on the one hand. That probably is a frequently stolen item because people right. are embarrassed about buying them. But at the same time, then if people are already a little bit embarrassed about it, then you lock them up. Yeah, then they're not going to buy them at all. Right. So, you know, that would almost be a good government intervention program would be like to have some sort of fund essentially where stores could like recoup their stolen condom losses that they for making them like easily accessible. Shit, I think CVS should have a bucket full of condoms. Like you wanna yeah. come in, there's a corner over there, go steal some condoms. Like that like you should. Well they do. I think Planned Parenthood and stuff gives out free condoms. Right. So. I mean it should be like the nurse's office at school should have condoms yeah. because you you tell people like all right, don't have sex before you're 18, and then or like you have to be 18 to buy condoms. Yeah, you should be able to be 14 and buy condoms yeah. because you know what? There's 14 year olds having sex. Yeah, the problem. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's really people just go from you know the nurse's office thing. Like there'd be like a bucket of lollipops, and like you take them, and then like the very next year you'd be right in the bucket of condoms. Yeah, like, like the, it's the, like it's like way too early. Shit. The, the eighth grade, you know, the eighth grade should have different nurse where you know yeah. they don't have their. The, they have the bucket of lollipops, and then ninth grade on, yeah. they have a bucket of lollipops and condoms. Yeah, probably just, the just, same just mixed them together. <laughs> yeah. just, mean, you, just flavored. Yeah, all, but, all the same flavors. Good. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but like sometimes using lubricant feels like it feels better. You know, I mean, like even medically, it just if it, it helps out a lot. Yeah. But then, like being thirty years old, like looking at that, going, "Hey, can you unlock this case?" I want to buy some lube, you know, yeah. like you just, there's such a bad stigma on it. Yeah, it is. I mean, you almost have to go into like, like it's almost, like it's, it's almost less embarrassing to go into like a sex shop right. because then at least like people know why you're there. Yeah. You're, you're there to like either have sex or get into your fetish versus like at CES, like I'm like, I'm there buying circus peanuts and you're behind me buying condoms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you're trying to hide them like yeah. you know, behind a bottle of Dr. Pepper and yeah. you know, have you ever stolen condoms? Yeah. Uh, have you ever used them? 
Yeah, like, <laughs> I, yeah, like in the past. Yeah. Uh, I haven't in years. Yeah. But. Have you ever stolen anything? No. No. Although I had a dream that I like was stealing a bunch of stuff the other day. Well, yeah. oh, that was weird. I, I totally forgot about it until you just mentioned it. Yeah. The only thing uh, I've ever really stolen from CVS is uh, yeah. the stomach medicine. It was thirty-two dollars a pill. Oh, and for some reason, the guy gave me a prescription for thirty pills. Wow. And and I go. So, so wow. that'd be like. Yeah. Nine hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Like overnight, it's thirty-two dollars a pill. Yeah, and and the the CVS pharmacist, she's like, oh, I can just fill out like five or six of these. Yeah, and then I go, all right, like that sounds fine. Yeah. And then she goes, ah, you know what? I'm just gonna put these on the counter and turn around. Mm. And like she like I had it was like I remember my face is red. I'm sweating. I'm in a ton of pain. Mm. It's like super muscle relaxers. Yeah, right. And um, just for like my stomach problems yeah. and then uh she's like just go away yeah. you know grab them go away right yeah. she's like I, like like it doesn't matter to me you know yeah. so like that was pretty cool so i guess like i stole them but like she told me to steal them and yeah. i was like like when you when you have to spend almost a thousand dollars just to be comfortable like yeah. that's terrible yeah yeah no i haven't yeah i never i don't know i think yeah, I think probably once in the last few years I used it. I don't know about it. <laughs> once? But, yeah, one yeah. time. I don't know. It was real short lived. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, this is terrible. Yeah, how about this? Yeah. I'm going home. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sleep in your backseat. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, um, this is related to something earlier, sort of. But, um, I was watching this video, um, one of like the YouTube fitness people, and they were saying about it was like ways to see if like you had chest weakness, which I definitely do somewhat. I mean, that's I mean, uh, I, you're not bringing up your missing muscle, are you? I mean, I definitely do have that. My, <laughs> my left shoulder is substantially weaker than my right shoulder, um, but uh, but it has to have your chest weakness, and like you know, that's my I mean, bench press is my favorite thing to do, like at the gym, like I pretty much have. And, and, like, I really ruined it because... Dumbbell uh, bench press or bench press press? Bench dumbbell press. bench press. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which, which, I, which I think I, I kind of like because my, shoulder, my left shoulder is weaker, so I can control each individually. Like, it feels better. Like, it hurts my shoulder whenever I've done, like, regular bench press, all that. I mean, I probably should do it sometimes, but I have to, I, but I have to go to a different gym than where I'm at now. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so... It was oh yeah, but I mean essentially, I mean it's my favorite thing, you know. But but I like totally ruined it because, or I totally ruined my gym schedule because, um, I mean it's it's like so easy to do like a bench press set and then stand up and like superset it with like bicep curls, but that also means that like the two best things you're doing at the same time and then everything else fucking sucks, because like because like because like those two days a week you do that, you go home and you feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then the other days you're doing like fucking back exercises. Like, it's like watching, like, vanilla porn. Like, like what's the point? <laughs> like, like yeah, I mean, it's fine. Like, it's, you, like, you can get by with it, but, like, it's it's not. Like, you just go home feeling, like, the same. But, like, your back's a little sore. Like, that's it. You're like, what, what did I even do for the last 45 oh, minutes? Well, Sunday I did, uh, I did, did, did deadlifts, and yeah. my legs and my back are all sore. Yeah. That's great. See, I, I like doing all, a lot of those power things, even though, yeah. like, I'm not, like, very, like, I don't do a lot of heavy weights. Uh, I like doing that. Like, my dumbbell bench, bench yeah. press is only 55 pounds. Yeah. Where is what, 70? 75. 75. See, yeah, I couldn't yeah. do that. See, but, I, like, I want, I want to be driving home with my arm around my, oh, like, my arm around my, my, or my hand around my arm and need, like, three hand lengths to get around because you're, like, <laughs> such a huge pump from doing tricep and bicep together. Yeah. Like, that, that's what I want. I don't yeah. know. Well, yeah, I like that too, but I also, I like, I also like the, uh, I don't know, I haven't really lost any weight because I ate like a fucking pound of steak tonight, but, yeah. but like, I, I mean, I, I like that feeling of like slimming down. Yeah, me too. I, I always do, every, every day I go to the gym, I always do some ab exercises and I always do, I, I, I honestly always do uh, like, a, a, like a lower back exercise too, because yeah, you just feel more, you feel more stable like yeah. when your core is stronger. Um, I really, I don't know what it's called when you like, when you like lean forward on the thing and then you like lean all the way down. Um, it's like, I know what you're talking about, but I have yeah. no idea. 
Yeah, and you like lean all, and you, you know, and like as you do a, a few of those, and you grab like a forty-five, like a plate, like and a reverse like, crunch. Yeah, and then like you lean all the way down and pull it back and stuff. Like that's I don't know. Yeah. That's uh, I've started doing that a, a couple times a week because yeah. it. I mean, honestly, like it's it's like I always had some lower back pain. And I think I, I think it just is like super strength in my lower back muscles compared to what they were before. It's, yeah, it's pretty great. You like. Like I always ask Rachel, are you in pain or are you sore? I don't know. You know, yeah. like, like you know when we work out our our arms real bad and like, yeah. we're like oh they're so sore. That's sore and pain. Like I can't deal with this. You yeah, know, there's a big difference. Like sore, you can still do do stuff. Pain, you're like oh, I can't do this. And she's like, like I explain that to her every single time. And she goes, oh, I'm just sore. And I'm like, oh, then we can do this. You know? Yeah. Well, it's the yeah. I think there's some muscles like like I feel like if your chest is if your chest hurts if your arms hurt. If like your your thighs hurt, you're like, oh, well, that's a good feeling. Yeah. But then like you know, anytime like if my stomach hurts after like after exercising or like or like I have this little bit of nagging pain like in my groin, and you're like, oh, I'm hurting it. Like, oh, that's, that's something bad. It's got to be something bad. It's probably not. It's probably it's just core. sore. Yeah. Your core. You got to keep your core tight. Yeah, but but I just always think like, oh, it's got to be something bad. I don't know. Yeah. I did these. Uh... Oh, we have to go. I have to show you these new new like my ass is. Killing me, my ass, yeah. my ass cheeks, not not my actual. Ass. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, these squat rows. Save it, I save it for the webcam. Yeah, these squat rows. Yeah, where you you grab the the pulleys that the squats all the way down. Yeah, you know the the cable rows. Yeah. So you get that you uh you have them and then as you squat they go in, yeah. but as you squat stand back up you row it back. Okay. And you do like ten of those and that like. I I don't think I've broken a sweat like that in like a huh. long time. I always break a pretty good sweat doing any any cable stuff because yeah. like because because it's essentially like a long superset because you can do you know you know you know you can do you can do like face pulls and then you can do like overhead stuff and then you can do across your body and like you can do it all one after the other and you never really have to stop. So yeah. I'm usually pretty sweaty after like 15 minutes of that. Yeah, I don't like doing across the body. I do, I do like core, like yeah. axe chops, where yeah. you do like the same thing. So you do axe chops up, but you just hold it, but you don't use your arms. And yeah. like you axe chop, you just use your core. Yeah. Or like you do the down axe chops, or yeah. you just do, you, you like come across. Like you do all three of those for yeah. each side. So is it basically you're doing like six exercises cool. uh, in like, you know, like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And like you're super sweaty, your core hurts. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, like I'm that. going home. Yeah. But then you're like, oh shit, I got nine more exercises. Yeah. Dude, I do, I mean, when I was like, you know, I guess like maybe a year ago at the gym when I was still pretty directionless, I mean, I'd be there forever and do all these different exercises. Now, I mean, there are some days I probably do three or four exercises. Yeah. I'm there for like 45 minutes and that's it. I don't know. But I, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely a lot stronger than I was doing that. Yeah. I don't know. Well, did I ever tell you the reason why I started to go to the gym? Not even the broken leg. Yeah. Uh, so I started going to the gym because I went whitewater rafting. Yeah. Rafting at Jim Thorpe. Yeah. You know, uh, the made up town. Yeah. And uh, I went I went there and um, I jumped out of the raft. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get back in the raft. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no. Like, I was, like, kind of, like, playing around at the gym or whatever. Yeah. And I went, oh, God, I can't. I can't get out. Like, I broke my leg. Yeah. So the first thing I did was uh, I had signed up for the gym. First time ever I would signed yeah. up for the gym, and I yeah. broke my leg. Yeah. Like, right after that. So I just did, like, I went to the gym with, like, a broken leg, and I did, like, arm stuff. Yeah. And then, Which is essentially what we all do anyway. Yeah. Well, I went, and I got, like, my bench press up to, like, 235. Yeah. Which I, I can't possibly do now. Yeah. I can do, like, 185, like, a couple reps. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, so I... So then, like, after that heel, or, like, why I was broken my leg, I couldn't get myself up out of bed without, like, using my, like, one leg. I couldn't yeah. get myself out of bed. I was like, huh. oh, no, I'm never letting this happen again. Yeah. But after, like, a couple of weeks, good. like, a couple of days or a week or two or whatever, yeah. like, I just got out of, like, I was super sore. Like, my uh, my core was super yeah. sore. Like, you just learn how to get, do it. Like, yeah. I'm super sore. And then, like, uh, maybe a year later, I jumped out of a raft. And I couldn't get my fat ass back into a raft. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't have the strength mm. to get into a raft. Yeah. Which is like, 
a foot and a half off the water. Yeah. And now, like, if I jumped out of a raft, like, I would jump right back into the raft. Like, I yeah. can get up no problem at all. Mm -hmm. So that's, like, the reason why, like, I started going to the gym. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, where well, I was going to the story before, though, was, so I talked about things that were markers of, like, chest weakness. And one of them was, which I, I think I definitely do, is when it is when you do a bench press that you that you use your shoulders too much. Yeah. So like when you do the bench press, like your shoulders should stay back and you should just push forward. But if your shoulders drift forward, then you're you're using your shoulders to like push part of the part of the weight. I definitely do that. Uh, so so I, I I just I just watch it honestly. So I'm pretty excited to go to the gym tonight and try to like consciously keep my shoulders back and push. Um, but um, but when he was talking about it, um, like another thing he was talking about was was comparing like an overhead, like like whatever that's called, like the overhead thing versus like a bench press, and he was saying like oh if your if your um, if your overhead press is like approaching your body weight and your bench press isn't yet one and a half times your body weight, like that's a sign of chest weakness because you're using your shoulders more. And then I was like, wait a second. That means I'd have to, like, so so by his definition then, if, if that's like the definition of being strong, that means that I would have to bench press like three plates basically, which, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I can't do. Yeah. I don't know. So I do... For both dumbbell and straight bar yeah. bench press, I do two different ones. Yeah. So the first one's like straight out where, mm. you know, you go straight up mm. over your breast. Yeah. Then the other one's like you come down like a V. Yeah. And then you come down. So you're past your breastplate, mm. like you're right, right at the bottom of your ribs. Mm. And you go up, I guess, over your shoulders. Yeah. And then, you know, you just, the other one where you just go like, you know, it's your yeah. big, like the big... So I do I do both positions when I do either one. Mm -hmm. So I do one set and then the other set of the other one set and then the other set of the other. Okay. So it's like I get both. So it's like more of a, a shoulder and you know chest workout and then more of a, like a straight up arm workout. Yeah. Well, the thing I didn't, the thing I didn't realize was how much the incline mattered. So like so like essentially the the more I guess the more inclined you are, the more you're working like the top part of your chest. And your shoulders a little bit and as you go back you're working more like the like the, the, your, the your whole chest basically right and then like dips work like the lower part of your chest more do you do dips ah uh, no oh you gotta get yeah, I got dips. dips yeah yeah that's a that's a push yeah where your pull-ups are a pull yeah but um I'm real burpee yeah i just i just I started doing dips but um but yeah i was doing everything at like a slight to medium incline and, and I was basically just doing that for the most part and like as you can see a huge difference because like if I go incline like up to like um, so I usually want to do an overhead press I incline to like six on the bench and that's my overhead and then I like now I start going down one at a time but like four or five I can do basically as much as like my overhead which is like 45 and then when I get down to like two and three on the incline, that's when I can do like heavy weight. And then when I go flat, I can't. I I I don't think I've ever done seventy five flat. Really? So so it definitely is my shoulders like contributing part of it. But it's I guess it's my shoulders and upper chest is like what's like that's that's what I just worked out the most like inadvertently. And so like so like the bottom part of my chest is just just shit. Yeah. You can you, you, you can squish it there, <laughs> but uh, you can't on me. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, the guy uh, right under my ribs, I had these like two like mm -hmm. big old bumps, and yeah. the guy at work, he goes, "What's that?" I go, "That's muscle." He goes, "No, you're fat as shit." Yeah. I go, "It's muscle, but I have two inches of fat over it. Leave yeah. me alone." But now, and you know, and thinking about it, I definitely had times where I've like bench pressed, and my like anterior delts are like are globes of bread. Yeah. It's like, 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 just like I like, like, like feel like freakishly large. I don't yeah. know. So, um, so yeah, I'm definitely using my shoulders too much. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty anxious to like implement that, yeah. that tip and see, see how things are different. Uh, well, um, we're not done yet, but mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed tonight's whole week casa with our medical degree. But uh, we're, we're very sad tonight because the Eagles are. I'm not sad that the Eagles are out of the playoffs. But I am sad for like, you know, 
So Nick that's, Foles. Yeah, Nick Foles. He's done. Mm-hmm. He's done with the Eagles probably. Yeah. And uh, you know the 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 way the game ended was like just not great because he went to his number one guy and he yeah. missed it. He missed catching the ball. So uh, we just want to, you know, I just want to say, you know, thanks to the Eagles for a uh, great, a great uh, season. Yeah. Well, great, like, last six games. Yeah. Which is crazy because Nick Foles wasn't accurate at all yesterday, but then they put up his numbers from the last, like, his last, like, 14 games or whatever, mm-hmm. and they were amazing. Yeah. But he's not accurate. It doesn't matter. He just wins. Yeah. Um, I mean, even last night, I mean... I mean, it was it was it was the same as the game before. You know, he didn't do anything the whole game. It didn't seem like. All right. But then he got the ball back, down by six points, and he had one drive to win the game. And he drove them downfield to the twenty, and he threw a pass to his main guy, and the guy dropped it, and it went for an interception. And I mean, it's almost sort of like, you know, I mean, it's almost it's I guess it's pretty appropriate how it ended. Because, I mean, he basically, you know, I mean, we, we died doing what we did, you know. I mean, right. I mean that's, that, that's, how, that's how we played football the last two years, at least when, in the end of the season when we won a lot. And, you know, it just, it, it, you know, and I, mean, I mean, I think it speaks too. I mean, you can see how thin the margin of error is. And yet Nick Foles has managed to stay on the good side of it for you know for for like 10 straight games now right you know which is almost impossible he's nine and one yeah which is crazy so um but you know and then and then you know alshon jeffries was devastated you know they, they had a great shot of like nick fole just like with his arm around him just talking to him yeah um and then it was a shame because even with that i mean they i mean i mean the, the, the much less likely at this point but I mean, they should have got the ball back with like 30 seconds left and had like a last ditch effort and just they, they some, couldn't stop somehow that. ran the ball right up the middle. I, yeah. I lost my mind at that. Yeah, it was crazy. But it was pretty cool. I was watching it at work and um, which is kind of fun because like you know you you're you're you know you're, you're you're with your patients all day and then like all you know they're 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 all waiting for the game and the game starts. You know, I was joking with everyone, like, I'm going to check on you before the game starts, and I'll see you at halftime. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, you're sort of like, so we had, like, somebody's phone out, like, like, like in the middle of the hallway, like, where we were watching it, but then, you know, you'd, like, be walking down the hallway, and, like, a play would be about to happen, so you'd, like, just pop into some random person's room and be like, oh, did you see that? That's crazy. So you're, like, just talking to all these random people, like, the whole day, so that's kind of fun. Um, even though you're like at work and like you know, and, and they're there sick, so like it kind of sucks for everyone. Yeah. But but still, like it's it's kind of fun in a way. Um, um, I had one dude that was like this, you know, like basically bed bound, and his um his wife had said about about put up, uh, you know, he had like a like an Eagles hat and shirt on, and I said we we put him on before the game, and then it was like the third quarter. I was I was leaving work. And I, and I remember, like, oh, man, that guy never put his hat on and stuff. So, like, so I, like, put my stuff down, like, ran back to him. I ran back to his room. I was like, oh, man, you got to put your hat and shirt. We forgot about it. And then he's like, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, they're in the corner. So, like, I handed him his hat. And that's when uh, it was, like, a drew, deep Drew Brees pass. And uh, I forget who it was, like, batted the ball down. So, we're like, oh, I, you know, so he put the hat on, you know, as he put the hat on. So, we're like, oh, man, the hat definitely works. It's, Keep the hat on, mm. and then like, and then he's like, "Oh, what about the shirt?" And I was like, "I don't know. The hat's working. I, I don't know about the shirt." I don't yeah. So I'm like, I pick up a shirt, and that's when Breeze throws that deep bomb touchdown. And I was like, "Oh no!" And I put the shirt back down, <laughs> and then there was a flag, and I and, and it was called back. Yeah. So I so like the last thing for I left, I basically told the guy, I "Was look, I'm putting the shirt in the corner where you can't get it. You're not putting yeah. the shirt on." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Uh, that's it for this week's uh, Holy Costa. Um, so tune in next week.